Mark's here. Hi. Hi. Oh, good to see <laughs> good you. Good to see you. How was your trip? It was good, thank you. How are you doing? Well, pretty good for an old man. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> so, how'd you do in Sedona? Did you have a lot of good shots, sir? Yeah, it was beautiful. I painted every day. Some days it was sort of cloudy, but I like the clouds. Um, and I got a lot of painting. After we went to Sedona, we went to Jerome, which is a ghost town. And it reminds me of some of the paintings mom did of ghost towns. And I really love this painting, this watercolor, uh, because the wood is so natural looking and I like the light in it. So I took some photographs of uh, Jerome and I'm gonna do some watercolors as well. I hope they're as good as this one. <laughs> well, you're so kind. Well, this, this is one of those old ghost towns that we stopped at that mom painted. Yeah. She did an excellent job on it. I think you enjoyed doing it very much, didn't well, you? Well, I, I did enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I should I go really back like into that. that someday. I want to tell you about the way I handle this painting. It's a watercolor. And some people say you can't, can't erase anything on watercolor. And here's a, 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 on the gun right here, I used an eraser, an electric eraser, with a shield behind it. And, and got the, after I painted it in black, and it looks like the metal shining through, and then I did the same thing on the holster, and I think that worked out. Also, this part down here. You can see how oh, this yeah. is done here. And, it's really and, good. And that's how that was and done. And Dad modeled for this. Yes, he did. <laughs> the truth of the matter is that this actually happened down in Tucson, and the guy that I was fighting with was Billy the Kid. A lot of people wonder what happened to Billy the Kid. I can tell you what happened to him. I blasted him. <laughs> <laughs> So, Mom, what sort of art did Grandma do? She studied fashion illustrating in San Francisco, and she was very good at it. Ah, so I'm lucky that I got that artist gene. <laughs> Three guess. generations down. I guess so. <laughs> yeah. Mom, do you like doing watercolors or oils better? I like them both. I think watercolors, for me, are a little more difficult. And, but I think there, as I said before, you can actually use an electric eraser and get some uh, unusual looks by doing different things that way with watercolor. I, I like that anyway. That's my style more. Yeah, watercolors have sort of a, their own thing going on. You know, you add too much water, it can bloom, and they, they have sort of an unexpected quality to them. I think How do you decide whether you're going to use watercolors or oil? It doesn't in my case. It's just more the mood I'm in. How about you, Mark? I do watercolor when I'm working in the gallery. It gives me something to do. Um, I have that studio there, so I have to be there a certain number of hours. Whereas I do the oils plain air on location. So all my oils are on location. A lot of my watercolors I do from pictures off my phone. So basically my watercolors are done indoors from photographic references. and. Uh, the, the oils are done afterwards. So, do you like to work with one medium? I like them, and I like them, and they're very, very different. Mm -hmm. I like letting watercolor go wild. I know. I, I like having and what's called a bloom using a wet brush technique, letting mixing different colors until it just creates some fabulous new thing. And uh, but I'll use a dry brush technique sometimes once the it's dried and I want to put more detail in mm -hmm. something. You'd if I have, have a boat, you know, I'll do the sky and the water in a wet brush technique and I'll put the boat in with a dry brush, you know, so I sort of do both. But I, I like the fact that they're so totally different. Maybe. Well, I think that's why I use the dry brush so much because I never know what to expect the other way. And it's fine if you can be that, what? Free. Broad, what? Free <laughs> is a good word. Yeah. Well, you have a much more of a technical illustrator background. Well, that's like, what I did. I was an illustrator right. uh, for quite a few years, and it's very tight. Right. Uh, worked for the government, you know, use aircraft and different, and things had to be, you know, very technical. And with that kind of a background, you tend to be rather tight. And, and But you have a style like Norma Rockwell. He had sort of an, an illustrator background. Well, he well. did, but... Uh, I certainly can't compare my, my work with his. He always had something very special that he would set up. Yeah. You paint in a, a lot of ways like Norma Rockwell, I think. 
you know. Well, in some ways, I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. With whom? Norman Rockwell. Of course, oh. he was famous. Oh, yeah. and then he did more than that because he had so much imagination with what he did with his characters. Right. Yeah, he created a story with mm -hmm. them. Well, you tell a story too with, with your paintings. For example, this painting here certainly tells a story. Um, and in a way, it's it reminds me a lot of a Norman Rockwell painting because I get a real feeling who this person is and uh, like I get to know him by just looking at him. And I think he's likable, you know, in his sort of blissed out sort of <laughs> <laughs> way. When I'm at my parents' house, the pond near the golf course they live on is one of my favorite places to paint. I had to walk about the length of two soccer fields. I'd painted on this pond many times before under this tree. I loved the shade and the shadows it cast. I sometimes used my phone to get a reference. Also, the picture from the phone was a little better. I put in my pen and ink lay-in and followed it up with some acrylic lay-ins. I was particular to make vertical lines to show the reflections of the trees on the water. I wanted to use both yellow and green in making these reflections, especially since one of the trees was yellow and green. My composition was sort of a C-shaped composition, which I created by accentuating the angle of the bank. I use a lot of colors in my paintings of water, particularly fuchsias and greens and yellows and blues. One of the trees had more of a blue-green color, while the other had a much more yellow-green color. I like this. It created a certain counterpoint. I also added some horizontal lines to make sure that I had the water. Painting in this area is really fun. I've done it many times and I love being here. This is one of my favorite spots. My mother used her father, who's my grandfather, as the model for this woodcutting. She often painted pictures of children. This young lady shows that Merlin's wand was in the New World. This picture shows my father's farm, and this shows a harbor Mom also was capable of doing plein air paintings. Witness this tree in Fall Beauty or this windmill. She also liked to paint me feeding the ducks when I was a child. Her charcoal method is on the right. This is a painting of a cowboy who's a family friend. All of these sit in perfect harmony in her studio, including many paintings of people from around the world dressed in exotic costumes. This little girl was painted with her favorite dog. Hi, I hope you liked my video and I hope you'll come visit me on markhaveman.com. We have lots of exciting content, including my other paintings, watercolors, oils, and there's some gift certificates that you might like, as well as every so often I give away a painting. Hope to see you. MarkHafeman.com. M-A-R-K-H-A-F-E-M-A-N.com. MarkHafeman.com. See you there.